In the early 90s, 3D rendering was still in its infancy. It represented the new frontier in computing. Shiny textures, stark lighting, and lens flares. Lots of lens flares. Then came Bryce, which transformed computer-generated images from a professional tool to an artist's playground. This groundbreaking software created worlds and brought 3D rendering to everyone. I'm Alex, and this is Retro Tech Dreams. Bryce was named after Bryce Canyon in Utah, whose landscapes were among the first to be simulated by the tool. Bryce created stunning, realistic landscapes, accessible to both artists and hobbyists. It could generate mesmerizing mountain ranges, coastlines, and surreal landscapes that captured the imagination of many users. It felt revolutionary for its time. Every computer could be used for 3D rendering, and every user could be an artist. Bryce pushed the boundaries of what we thought could be achieved on a personal computer. Back when 3D interfaces were mostly utilitarian, Bryce stood out for a skeuomorphic design. The interface mimicked real-world objects and environments. This design philosophy, championed by designer Kai Krauss, made the complex world of 3D rendering more tangible, intuitive, and approachable. Buttons and controls weren't icons with text. They resembled physical objects like terrains or lighting, adding an element of tactile familiarity to the tool. Contrast this with popular 3D tools at the time, which used traditional menu-driven and multi-window interfaces. While functional, these interfaces and their abstract icons often felt unfamiliar and intimidating to newcomers. Bryce was different. If you want a mountain, add a mountain. If you want a light, grab a light. Add fog, shift the position of the sun. Bryce made us want to touch and play with every control. Its interface made 3D rendering less about navigating complex software and more about the creative process. By making 3D rendering feel more natural and less daunting, Bryce opened the doors of creativity to a wider audience. In Terrain Editor, users could craft around mountains, valleys, and landscapes in a way that felt more like sculpting. Elevations are drawn with a paintbrush, then adjusted through one of the many sliders to make it look more natural. Real-time 3D previews weren't possible on personal computers at the time, and most 3D apps were limited to wireframes before rendering. But Bryce previewed your terrain in 3D. This feature allowed users to see their creations evolved as they worked on them, without pausing the render first. It's this type of attention to detail in Bryce that kept users focused entirely on creating. The material editor brought objects to life. With Bryce, surfaces could have intricate textures that mimic real-world materials even with reflections and refractions. This level of detail in a consumer app was rare for its time. Lighting and sky were other areas where Bryce showed off its depth. The software could produce intricate light setups, including global illumination effects that were previously only used in professional tools. Users could create any time of day, from sunrises to twilights, adding moon, stars, and planets. The software enabled the creation of a vast array of environments, from alien landscapes to serene lakes. But it also included primitive shapes, allowing users to construct man-made structures and environments. Just as we know limitations breed creativity, Bryce users push these primitive shapes to the limits, creating sophisticated models and scenes. With a timeline and some simple keyframes, users could bring their creations to life through animation, although rendering these animations usually took an entire night. Plus, Bryce gave professionals the ability to import objects like DXF files. This feature made Bryce a valuable tool in a larger digital arts pipeline. Bryce was a portal to new worlds, and many artists use Bryce as their medium of choice. Here are a few of my favorites. Critics loved how Bryce brought 3D modeling to the masses. In 1995, Mac user acknowledged Bryce's interface had a learning curve, but also highlighted this rewarding nature. Bryce is a lot like Kai's power tools. Both programs take some getting used to, but once you're up to speed, they're a joy to work with. Fast forwarding to 1998, Mac Attic praised Bryce 3D. Bryce just keeps getting deeper and deeper. The latest overhaul delivers surprisingly powerful and long overdue animation abilities. Even today, artists are still using Bryce to publish their creations across Reddit and online communities. Bryce showed us what could be accomplished when we were handed the tools to bring our imaginations to life. Bryce democratized 3D landscape generation, making what was once a domain of high-end studios accessible to everyday artists and hobbyists. Its intuitive interface and powerful rendering engine broke new ground in user-friendly modeling. For many, Bryce was the first gateway into the world of 3D design, a spark that ignited an interest in digital creation. For the first time, Bryce enabled a generation to explore, create, and dream in 3D. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. 
And if you have ideas for more retro videos, please be sure to comment them down below. See you in the next one.